the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Let's have every head bowed and every eyes closed. Our Father in heaven, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your great mercy. Thank you for your unconditional love. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, be with each and every last one of us to open the, our ears up, open our hearts up, to apply the word of God to the everyday of our lives so that we can reach out to other people for a soul-saving gospel, Lord. Father, we would like to uh, trust in your words, believe in your words. I pray for whoever's listening. If they're lost, they'll come to a saving knowledge before it's too late, Lord. I pray for all the ones that are in here. If they are lost today, Lord, I pray for their salvation, Lord. I pray for our youth, Lord, as it continues to grow. I pray for souls to be saved and lives to be changed. And Lord, I pass on high. Lord, I pray you just work through him, Lord, freely. And Lord, just thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, this is from the Colorado, from uh, the Angel family, which we just started supporting, you know, which is pretty cool. Uh, dear praying friends and supporters, we are amazed at the doors God has opened for us to share our burden for Colorado. The need for churches here in the United States is more apparent and acknowledged by pastors which allow doors for support to open more quickly, which, you know, look how fast it was. We just took them on just recently. We have enjoyed seeing friends who have been smiling and serving Jesus since we were small children. It is blessing to see they are still smiling and loving Jesus. Please pray for Keith. Now, Keith is a Catholic, that's a professed Catholic, and they've been spending time uh, answering questions and giving them the gospel and stuff like that, but uh, he finally confessed to something that will take him to heaven, but I don't know as far as that is. So hopefully he'll come to save him in the knowledge of Christ, but we just got to pray for him. Another person to pray for is J.R., and yes, that's his name. That's what he said right here. He does not have insurance and only hopes he is going to heaven. You know, I'm glad I don't live by hope so, so I know for I know so that I'm going to heaven. Pray for the convicting, converting, and comforting power of the Holy Spirit. Pray for these special hearts to receive God's perfect gift. The Lord allowed six churches to partner with us, and many more are prayfully considering what God would do, have to do for them. Thank you for the pastors who reach out by faith and believe in the ministry God has given to the family. We desire the confidence, compassion, courage as we travel roads and present the burden for the souls in Colorado, cultivating for Colorado the angel family, which is cool. Like I said, they're already building churches, so that's all I got. Thank you, Brother Sean. It's good to see each one in the house of the Lord tonight. Uh, let's see what we got to do here. All right, it's prayer time. How about that? Change the kid's schedule on me. i got to look and see what's going on. <laughs> Does everybody have a prayer list to get one when you came in? Anybody didn't get one? Need one up front, Eston. Thank you, sir. You, uh, need two, Eston. <laughs> Catch you before you take off back there. Uh, anybody got a prayer request we need to add tonight? I'm sure she is. She's probably on the, on the list prayer list. Uh, yeah, there she is. She's over here. Don't want to miss nobody, though. Thank you. It remind, doesn't hurt to remind us. Anybody else before we pray? What about the families in Nashville? I don't think they're on here. I, don't, I hadn't heard about that one myself. Was it yesterday? That's what we talked about. That's what we talked about. The Bible study, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. That's right. I remember that now. And that's in Tennessee, right? All right. Okay, anybody else? All right, if not, then we're going to go to the Lord in a word of prayer. 
I'm most kind and gracious Heavenly Father. We will thank you for the opportunity we had to be in your house and study your word tonight, Father. We just thank you for each one who's come out, Father, and expecting a blessing tonight from you, Father, from your word. We know that you're going to supply that for us tonight. But we have many needs on our hearts tonight, Father. We just want to lift them up to you tonight, Father. Pray you'll be with Toby Moore and his unspoken request. Also be with Diane Pritchard for health. Be with the uh, Brandon Stone family and take care of their needs, Father. Be with, be with Tyranny Warsing for salvation. Also for Chris Atkins and his health. Lisa Spencer and her health. Ryan White's going to be having jaw surgery. Brenda Bryan's home tonight with a cold. Be with those shooting victims in Tennessee and their families. Father, pray you just touch them. Wrap your loving arms around them and feel your presence tonight, Father. Father, be with all our school children around the United States. Father, pray you just touch each one, Father, and keep them safe, Father. And keep them in your will. Now, Father, we have many needs we want to lift up tonight to you, Father. Be with our pastor tonight. He brings a message to us, Father. It'll be a message we need to hear. It'll change our lives and change the lives in our community. Bless his family, Father, for his faithfulness. And we pray you give him souls for his labor. Thank you for our church attendance, Father. It's been really great here lately. It's continuing to grow. We pray it will continue to grow, Father. Thank you for our tithing and giving and our deacons and trustees here at Timberlake Baptist Church. We thank you for uh, the uh, money that's coming in. Take care of your needs here, Father. Also, thank you for our deacons and trustees who make decisions regarding our services and building uh, procedures and everything, Father. Here we just pray you give them wisdom and give them strength, Father. Be with the new building we're going to be uh, building before long on, on our new property, Father. We pray you be with Blair Construction and the plans, Mike Maracas and the architect. All these will work together, Father, to your honor and your glory. We'll have a new building out there, Father, where we can worship you in spirit and truth. Thank you, Father, for eternal broadcasting and that ministry that reaches around the world as we broadcast the, uh, uh, the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. We pray you use it, Father, to your glory, and people will come to know you before it's eternally too late. Again, Father, thank you for our WTV broadcast in South Carolina. We've been getting good results down there, Father. We continue. We we'll pray to continue to get good results, Father, and to see souls saved and lives changed there through that broadcast. Thank you for the many ministries here at Timberlake Baptist Church, our Believers Bible Institute, our Sunday School and Teachers, our Youth Ministry and Tuesday Bible Study. We thank you, Father, for all these ministries. We pray you be with each leader of each ministry, Father, that you give them uh, the words they need to teach, Father. Be with our students as they listen in Sunday school. Pray you be with the, um, this ministry, Father, they'll continue to grow. Be with the peace of Israel, Father. We just thank you that you watch over your chosen people, Father, there. Pray, Father, be with our president, our nation, and economy. Father, take care of our needs here, Father, at home. We pray our president will, uh, and, and leaders will look to you as they make decisions that affect our communities, Father. Be with the conflicts in the Ukraine, Iran, Iraq, North Korea, Afghanistan, and Syria. We pray, Father, you keep our soldiers safe and bring them home soon, Father. They can be back with their families, be reunited again. Thank you for our visitors, Father, that have been coming faithfully, Father. We pray we'll continue to see new visitors here at Timberlake Baptist Church. Thank you for our new conflict. First, Father, we pray you'll help us as we teach them, Father, in the ways they should go, Father. And we'll be with hands of glory in that ministry, Father. Reach down and touch each member. And, Father, we pray that they'll be used to your honor and your glory. Now, Father, tonight we have many needs for salvation. We will lift up to you. Pray you'll be with Nick Albino, Carl Amos, Wade Ayers and his health, Brandon and his parents, uh, Amanda Banks, Ashley Banks, Brian Banks, and Daniel Banks, Rachel Bowen, Steve Banks, uh, Jackie Bryant, Ashley Cobb, Tommy and Jamie Connor, uh, Ann Crutchfield, Clint Davis, Terry Deer, who also has cancer, Robert Durr, Lester Dodson, Michelle Doss, Joel Dutton, Tom Hardy, Jesse Horbett, Brandon Gotze, the Horsley family, Jimmy Jones, Henry and Kenny Law, uh, Billy and Mike Keene, Stephen Keene, Ryan Tyler Kinder, Buster Lewis, Sean McCall, Jason Haley Minter, Darren Moore, Lauren Myers, Michelle Owen, Bradley Payne, Margaret Poston, Mark and Brian Reagan, Caitlin and Victor Sanchez, uh, Mark and Timothy Sherrod, Dylan Smith, Sean and Bobby Stout, uh, Cindy Thompson, Kimberly Thompson, Madeline Thompson, Megan Thompson, and Melvin Thompson. I'll be with Dustin Turner, Buddy Travis, Joyce Watson, Megan Wilson, David Wood, Jessica Wood, Wade Woods, Claude Wall. Tommy Vincent and Les Young. We pray, Father, someone will go to these individuals and tell them about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and how we can change their lives and they'll come to know you before it's eternally too late. Father, we pray for the many health needs around us tonight. Father, we pray you'll just touch each one according to your will. Be with Riker Bowen, who's recovering from surgery. Be with my health needs. Be with Earl and Deborah Connor, Jack Dale, Tony Dalton, Logan Drum, uh, Linda Durham, Joyce Earp, 
Roy Cletus Evans, Faith Ann Hawley, Wayne Hodges, Audrey Hoskins, Maureen Johnson, David and Gail Jones, Angeline Merriman, uh, Shelby Martin, who's recovering from knee surgery, Gary McCullum, who's recovering from surgery, Bieber Thurby Moore, Linda Moorefield, Nancy Newton, Bobby Nichols, who has asthma, Loretta Nichols, who's recovering from surgery, uh, David and Patty Murray, Angie Oaks, Vince and Sarah Piotta, Alan Cheryl Perdobinski, Ann Pruitt, Robert and Vicki Reed, Steve Richardson, Cindy Rutherford, Nat and Barbara Saunders, Mike Smith, Bill and Judy Snow, uh, Carol Tickle, who was Ricky Toller, Anita Warwick, Angel Underwood, Evelyn Watlington, Leon and Connie Wiles, Harold Yancey, and Amy Young. We pray, Father, you'll touch these individuals, restore their health, Father, and bring them back into the fold, Father. Do what you can do for them, Father, for we ask these things in your name. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Jesus. We thank you for all many blessings, God. We just thank you so much for all that you've done for us, Lord. Lord, we just thank you so much for sending your Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. We're so thankful tonight, God. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to come to you and worship you freely in your house, Lord, and just to uh, come to you and pray for you to, pray to you tonight, Lord. Help us come boldly before the throne of God, Lord, and that you might show grace upon us, God. Lord, I ask you to please be with uh, Gail Jones, Lord, recovering from surgery, Lord. We just thank you for the many blessings there, God. Lord, I ask you to please be with the people who have diabetes. We ask you please be with Amanda, Ron Allen, <clears throat> Sherry Bray, Logan Cremona, David Eagle, Vicki Miller, David Murray, Kendall Sage Oaks, Rod Rains, Lee Rains, Danny Warwick and his knee, and Winnie Ann, so Lord, pray you just touch him and bless him in a mighty way. We ask the same for the people in nursing homes, God. We ask you please be with Dale Leffer, uh, Susan Carter, Catherine Collins, Susan Dooley, Patsy Ferguson, Curtis Martin, Francis Robertson, Joyce Thompson, Thomas, uh, Diana Wagner, Vidal Crane, and Michelle Johnson, and Kyle Baldwin, Lord. We ask you to please be with our friends, family, and neighbors. We ask you just to uh, answer each one of their needs according to your precious and holy will. We ask you to please be with Austin Bakerly, Vinnie Bakerly, Carol Bonnet, Phyllis Cleary, uh, Ann Cleary, Raymond Cleary, Jean Connor, Amy Ferguson, Mary Hines, Damian Lewis, Nick Mannigan, and his heart, Chelsea Martin, Danny Martin, Keith Moorefield, Donald Owen, Josh Owen, uh, Karen um, Pruitt, Bill Ray, Florence Richardson, Ricky Shelling, and Ann's Cancer Lord, uh, Glenn and Nancy Sladen, and Alan and Shirley Taylor, the Vickers family, Garland Watson, Preston Watson, and Jim White. We ask you to please be with people who have cancer, Lord. Please just reach down and touch their bodies, Lord, and just heal them in a mighty way and remove the cancer from their bodies. We ask you to please be with Jenny Atkins, Portia Atkins, Kathy Allen, Allen Bobby Allen, David Bell, Tom Barley, Robin Baker, Scooter Barton, Vanessa Burchette, uh, Eli Burke, Pam Carter, Ronnie Carter, Tom, Tammy Cox, Barbara Clarkson, Bill Cooper, Ann Dales, Pat Dalton, Melody Dickerson, Thomas Dix, Callan Dunn, Jeremy Ferguson, Marie Foles, Tim Fries, Amanda Glider, April Gordon, James Griffin, Sherry Grundy, Michelle Hall, Red Hardy, Karen Hilton, Kevin Hicks, Anika Hodnett, Kevin Hopkins, uh, Carlton Hoskins, Pamela Hudson, James Hunley, Emerson Keats, Ronnie Lawless, Linda Mahomes, Joseph Miller, Billy Joe Moran, Karen Nation, Hay Hayden Neal is back, Tony Phillips, Marie Nestor, uh, Ruth Patterson, Tasha Ritchie, um, Donald Ricketts, David Robertson, Patricia Robertson, Naomi Robertson, Linda Wyatt, Robin Stallings, Jess Waller, Frank Wilkinson, Dave Wilkinson, and Lisa Wilson, Lord. We ask you to please just touch him and bless him, Lord. We ask you to please be with uh, the people who have all time under dementia, Mary Malone and Roy Evans, and please be with the people who have COPD, Mike Mills, Jim Phillips, Sheila Richardson, and Amanda Watson. Lord, we ask you to please touch all these people, Lord. We ask you just to please uh, be with our prayer list, Lord, and just uh, answer each need according to your precious and holy will. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Lord, as we continue on with our prayer list, we ask that you be with the uh, special request. Be with Donna Amos, Jenny Barrett, uh, Skylar Bowen, Matthew Bryan, Tanya Curry, Dale Cleary. Be with myself, Mallory, Mallory Hamlet, Hamlet, Sean and Teresa Horbit, Janice Hodges, uh, Katie and Van Hunt, Pastor and Sister Hussey, Aston Lewis, Shelby Martin, Christy McBride, Mike and Diane Mills, Angie Moore, Sean Patterson, Sarah Piotta, Betty Price, Bonnie Raines, Amy Saunders, Kevin and Kim Snow, Bob Tamson, Eileen Tickle, Hannah Vipperman, Landon Walker, Matthew and Chi Williams, Vicki Reed, Danielle Roach, and Lois Witt. 
Lord, I ask that you uh, be with our college students. Lord, we knew they, uh, they need you in the body right now more than ever. Lord, I ask that you be with uh, Taylor Adelman, Becca Clary, uh, Alyssa Fuqua, Bradley Gatti, Carlton Hoskins, uh, Trinity Langley, Elizabeth Lewis, Joanne Jennings, Dakota McBride, Caleb Moore, Amber Nocia, Caleb Pulley, Mary Sue Woodson, Tori Underwood, Christine Yancey, and Jason Yancey. Uh, Lord, we pray for our pastors and, ev and evangelists, Lord. Pray for the uh, Scott Agee family, uh, Jamie Adams, Joe Arthur, Bobby Brooks, Melvin Campbell, Kenneth Cloud, Jeff Chapman, Scott Dean, Carl Carlton Duck, Larry Fitzgerald, Jerry Flanagan, Jerry Foley, uh, Donnie Glass, Frank Gooch, Mike Harp, Jason Holly, Wayne Hudson, Larry and uh, Donna Johnson, John Kinsey, Derek Kizer, uh, Kaiser, Tim Kaiser, Terry St. John, Steve Lamb, Carol Martin, Dave Peters, Dan Schelling, Tim Schelling, uh, Davey Shelton, Mark Snowden, Donnie Stevens, Philip Stout, the Talbot family, Brian Warren, and Jeff Woods. Lord, we pray for, uh, pray for those to get back in church. Lord, we pray for the Clary family, uh, Buddy and Carol Golden, Cassian family, Kirsten McBride, DJ and Chelsea, uh, be with Gary Graham, Jonathan Reed, Glenn Tickle, Daryl, and family. Lord, we ask that you be with the uh, remainder of this prayer list. Just answer all these prayers according to your precious and holy will. This is Jesus' name I pray. Our Father in heaven, as, as we continue to pray, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, be with all our missions that we support, Lord. Just continue to watch over them and just, Lord, I pray for more souls be saved and lives be changed as far as being with them, as far as them being a light. Teddy Angel, Tamara Aldridge, Virginia Assembly Independent Baptist, Randy Ashcraft, Beacon Baptist Mission, Commander Al, Emmanuel Bala, Evangelist Earl Carson, John Coleman, Mike Sue Cook, Stan Culler, Keith Cullers, Krista Giacomo, Fortino Dratez, Faye Dykes, Daniel Farrow, David Gibbs, Virgil Ganglin, Jimmy Harris, Larry Henderson, Adrian Hernandez, Lois Howe, Patrick Hubbard, Buster Kinsey, Frank Kinsey, George Kinsey, Nessa LeBlugan, Bobby Lee, Jimmy Long, Sergio Mahanos, Storm Rescue Missions, Nathan Miller, National Passage Cuba, National Passage Pakistan, Dr. John Mitchell, Alan Nye, Mike Peckoff, Michael Peckoff, David Rawson, Ken Ream, Evangelist Jeff Worley, David, Dan Ritchie, Demetrio Rodrigo, Roloff Ministry, Jason Servo, Tabernacle Children's Home, Hal Williams, David Weiss, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name all the upcoming events, and Lord, help us continue to keep focus on soul winning. Lord, pray for our course, and Lord, just use them in a mighty way. I pray in Jesus' name, allow us to continue to be revived and invite people to come, the Katata to be a packed out house, souls be saved, lives be changed, John Mitchell as well, Lord, just anoint him, Lord. Lord, just help us continue to just keep being a light to people so people can come in and hear the word of God and come to us even hours before it's too late. Dr. Cloud, Larry Johnson, Vacation Bible School, let that be well. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for a lot of children to be here and souls to be saved and lives to be changed. AG family, camp free as far as the youth. Lord, let it continue to grow and souls being saved and lives being changed. And the Lester's, Lord, just be with them. And Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name be with tonight's service. Just help us continue to just open our hearts and ears to the word of God and to really truly honestly to really live it so that more people can come to a saving knowledge of you in jesus name i pray amen all right let's take your hymn books and turn to 129 let's sing all three verses to rock of ages clap for me let me hide myself in thee 129 let's sing all three verses Oh. 
Harris has come to take the offering tonight. Everything comes in on Wednesday night, goes to our Wednesday night fund. Got a lot coming up and all out April, so let's be able to take care of that, and let's be able to take care of God's men and God's people as they come, and uh, so they can come be a blessing to us. Amen? Amen? Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for loving us. We thank you, Lord, for the ability to give. And they live in a country where we're free to give. And Lord, we know that if we give freely and willingly, Lord, we know that you will take that which we've given and make it into something eternal. Most of all, the souls are saved and lives are changed. And Father, we ask you, Lord, bless this offering, bless the gift and the giver. For it's in Christ's name we pray and ask these things. Amen. and turn back to Nehemiah chapter 9. We're in verse number 12. We've been talking about adoring the Savior. We've already talked about a proper name, a powerful nature, a personal nurturing, persecution nullified, and provision of the needed. That's where we are tonight in verse 12. Provision of the needed. Moreover, thou lettest them in the day by a cloudy pillar, and in the night by a pillar of fire, to give them, what's that word? Light in the way whereas they should go. Wherever there's a need in their life, whether it's something tangible or intangible, whether it's a need physically or a need spiritually, wisdom or leadership, God is always there to provide that for you if you're willing to wait on him. Now, we have to learn to be mature in waiting on the Lord. That's easy preaching, hard living. Because God doesn't answer on call. He doesn't always answer when you pray. And he doesn't always say yes either. Sometimes he'll say no. And you've got to be mature enough to handle his answer. And most of the time, he'll give you something better than you ever anticipated. But you've got to be willing to wait on him. He's not just dealing with you. He's dealing with the devil. He's dealing with the world. And he's dealing with uh, you as well. So he's got a lot on his hand. You've got to give him some room to work with. But God will always provide leadership for his people. He will always provide the wisdom of the way. He'll always show you. You just got to be still and know that he's God. You got to learn to walk through a door when he opens it, even if you're afraid of it. You got to be willing to sometimes stand still until he opens that door. There's a lot of things you have to put in consideration. Uh, if God was in full control as he wants to be, it's easy. But not everybody's always willing to succumb to his will or follow his way. In the wilderness, Israel, after they had rebelled against his leadership, here's a wonderful thing. Even though they were in the wilderness, he still led them. He still was with them. Even though they were in rebellion, even though they were in sin, uh, and they had turned their back on God and the promises he had made, he still led them. Aren't you glad for that? Aren't you glad to know you can mess up and God still be with you and never leave you nor forsake you? Psalm 23, 1. Let's look at Psalm 23 for just a few minutes tonight. Psalms 23 is one of the greatest psalms when it comes to leadership in your life. Uh, we hear people preach on Psalms 23 all the time. But let's take a minute tonight and look at it from a different perspective. 
we know, first of all, that he's watching. He's got his eyes on me and you. He can't take his eyes off of us. The Lord, who's God of the universe, is my, that's personally for you, shepherd watching over you. And shall not, and I shall not what? Won't. Now, the Lord will make sure we never go without what we need. Doesn't mean we'll go without what we want because sometimes we don't get what we want. We get what we need. Say amen. And he knows what your needs are. He knows what your wants are. And sometimes he'll give you what you want. But he'll always give you what you need. And he sees and he knows our every circumstance. He knows when we need encouragement. He knows when we need strength. He knows when we have a physical need in our life. But here's the thing. If you've got your back turned to him, he's not going to help you. You've got to be facing the Lord at all times. Your eyes in his eyes. Your hand in his hand. You've got to be willing to meet God and stand with him and by him and for him before he can answer your prayer. Some people's prayers aren't answered. And some people are left alone because they choose to be alone. They choose to be alone. They don't, they don't reach out to God. I promise you this. If you reach out to God, he'll reach back to you. He will always reach back. But we've got to learn to be Christian enough and mature Christians enough to understand his reaching back, understand what he's trying to do for us. Why? We have his word. Look at verse 2. We, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Now, I'm glad he didn't say a, a bland desert. How about you? He'd make you lay down in, 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 a, in a dry desert. That'd be a bad place to be. But he said, no, I, I'll put you in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. You know why it says that? Sheep will not drink running water. The shepherd has to lead the sheep to a pool of water because if the water's running, they get scared and run off. And so the shepherd has to bring them to a pool of water that's calm and still. Listen, that's what God understands your foibles. We all have them. Not anybody in this room is the same. We're all different. We're all different. And God knows our differences. And that's why you shouldn't get to the point in your Christian life where you look at another Christian and say, well, God's treating him better than me. You don't know that. You don't know what that person's foibles are. Now, I'm not scared of a spider as long as I can see it and kill it. Okay? Spiders don't bother me that bad. Now, a snake, I don't want even want to see one through the glass. I don't even like to look at the pictures. When I was in school, I taped the pictures of the snakes up so I wouldn't see them. I, I didn't want to see the pictures. Of them. You was that way too, sister? I didn't want to see them snakes. Me and Brandon are total opposite. He's dumb enough he'll pick a snake, a snake up and walk around with this stupid thing. And, but you let a spider come near him. He'll turn a heebie-jeebie foot and run a mile a minute. He is scared to death of a spider, but not of a snake. I'm scared of a snake, but not of a spider. We're different. That's why you cannot look at your fellow Christian and say, well, God's not treating me right. You don't know that person. You don't know what they're going through. They don't know you. Everybody's a different case. Uh, he, may, he may be in a st strong state of grace and you may be in a weak state of grace or vice versa. God may need to give you a little more help than they need to give him and him a little more help to give you. We've got to learn you can't look at everybody and say, God's not treating me fair according to the way he's treating him. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. He leads you beside the still waters. He, he'll make sure you have green pastures to graze in. And let me tell you something. This is the greenest pasture you'll ever have right here. The Word of God. You can graze in this thing 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and all day on Sunday. Say amen. And you can learn something. You can grow thereby. I'm, 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 I'm slowly but surely competing with Eston. I want to check my numbers yesterday to see how many people have been watching my preaching messages. And I had to go through 25 messages of Eston Lewis before I got to mine. 
and all these people saying, great job, Destin, great job. Why ain't he saying it on mine? You know? <laughs> hey, but that's okay. We're not in competition. We're in cooperation. Say amen. And uh, that's the thing about the Word of God. It's cooperating with God. It's just reading His Word. Grazing in His Word. Grazing in the Scriptures. Now, as long as we graze on the pages of the precious Word of God and the powerful Word of God, we'll never starve for the faith. God's principles will feed our faith. Let me tell you where some Christians are weak. Not in tithing. They don't have no problem writing that check and throwing it off and play. They won't have any problem coming to church, sitting in the pew, sleeping while the preacher preaches. We have no problem with that. That's, that's easy to do. But when it comes to faith of telling somebody about Jesus, now they'll get not need. Amen or amen. You see, you have to have faith. Some things are easy, some things are hard. Now, if I were to tell Steve Rains he had to preach next Sunday, I'd have to find a new trustee. Wouldn't I, Bonnie? He'd be gone. I, I couldn't, oh, he'd be dead. No, I don't want that to happen. I, I thought he might run, but I didn't know he'd die. Good day. That's, hey, whoo, Lord, help me. <laughs> See, Steve's a behind the scenes kind fellow. I'm in the front. I didn't do the preaching. I'm, I, I don't have no problem preaching. And they hate to see me sit down and preach because they know they're going to have to be there for a while. But I'm standing up, they say, ain't going to take long. This will be done in a minute. But sitting down is a different story. Now, if I had to change that light bulb up there, it'd be dark in this church. I don't even know how to do it. I wouldn't even know where to go buy one. I told Steve Sunday morning, I said, Steve, I got a black eye up here. Tonight, I ain't got no black eye nowhere. Steve done took care of that thing. We're different. Amen? God's called us to do different things in different areas. And it would take faith for me to have to change that light bulb because I'm scared of heights, and I think the ladder would be scared of me. Can't take a lot of faith for me to do that. It'd take a lot of faith if Steve had to preach Sunday. Say amen, Steve. He's going to say amen because he don't want to preach. He's going to cooperate with me right now. I guarantee you. It takes a lot of faith for us in some areas, some, and more faith than others. But whatever faith we've got to have, sometimes when there's something we've really got to do for God, God wants us to do, we've got to step our faith up. We've got to move our faith up a little more, do a little greater. Give a little more prayer. Give a little more effort. Say amen. Uh, step out a little more. Step out a little faster. But as long as we are uh, in the word of God, our faith will grow. And as long as we drink from the pages of the comforting and encouraging word of God, we'll never thirst for the things of this world. That's a key. If you spend more time in this Bible and more time serving God, today I had a busy day. From the moment I got up, after I dropped Tom's bacon in the floor and got to working, before I turned out, it was 3 o'clock. I'd done, done all my Bible Institute. I'd done got all my mail ready for uh, uh, strength for today. And I'd done done this and done made sure Jamie had his orders because if you don't tell Jamie what to do, he won't do nothing. So I had to send that to him and make sure he had his work to do. And, you know, I, and before I turned around, it was 3 o'clock. Time just went by fast. I didn't have no time to get in trouble today. I had too much work to do. You serve God, and you won't have time to get in trouble. And you'll enjoy what you're doing. And you'll make a difference in the world you're living in. You see, if you will, will graze in the Word of God and drink from the Word of God, the Word of God will make sure that you don't have a hankering for the things of the world. When you're getting fed in the Word of God and watered by the Word of God, you don't want the food of the world, and you don't want the drink of the world. You want everything God's got for you. Say amen. You'll never be thirsty. He'll quench your thirst. All right? We know he's watching. We know we have his word. Now, see, we will have his will. I, I've had times in my life when I said, Lord, what is your will? Lord, what, what is the will, your will for my life? What am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? Which way am I supposed to turn? He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me, listen carefully to this, in the paths of righteousness, of what's right, not according to what we want, not according to how we think, but he will lead us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
I don't understand these Christians that think God's supposed to do everything they want him to do. It's the other way around. We're supposed to want to do everything God wants us to do. And I'm telling you, after 35 years of experience, Walter's will goes this way, but God's will always goes this way, and I've got to turn around and follow him. And that ain't always easy. It's not something I always like, something I always want. But I always find out when it's over, it was the best thing for me, and he got the glory. Amen? I got the opportunity, and he got the glory. But you've got to turn around, and you've got to follow him. He's not following you. You know, sometimes these parents, I don't understand them. They follow the kids, and the kids are telling parents what to do. It. For me, that's a dog wagging a tail. I mean, tail wagging a dog. Amen or me? The dog should be wagging the tail. The parent should be leading the child. But that's what's wrong in our world today. They don't have any leadership because they become the leaders and the parents become the followers. Well, it's the same thing in the spiritual life. If God's not following you around saying, Sugar, what do you want? Honey, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? No, he's almighty God. I ought to be following him saying, hey, Lord, what can I do for you? Lord, what do I need to do? Lord, show me what to do. That's what we ought to do. Well, we think God's this heavenly Santa Claus that's supposed to come and twinkle his nose like bewitched in the 60s and give us what we want. That's, that's TV. You do understand that, don't you? TV's not real. And neither is our expectations. We need to find out from God what God wants us to do. And we'll never go the wrong road. We'll never go the right or go to the to the left. We'll always go to the right. You see, each and every day, God is watching. And we need to be watching God. So God can lead and direct our every step in His will. And His will refresh and restore our faith. When I went with Marvin and Marie Heiner, to Florida with Transport for Christ. He drove a big rig. And she rode with him. And they put me in their LTD. I thought I was in class. I was in the LTD and I had to, I didn't have no problem seeing him because he was in that big rig. It said, Transport for Christ, all the way on the side. And we'd get on 95 heading down toward Florida. And sometimes I'd, I'd get to patting my feet and listening to the music and Marvin be way up yonder. I had to put my pedal to the metal. He'd hit that CB. He'd say, undercover elephant, where are you? I'd say, I'm behind you. I see you. He said, well, get up close. <clears throat> I know you can see me, but I can't see you. So get your elephant self back here where you're supposed to be. Yes, sir. And I'd, he'd tell me, and I'd get right up behind him, and down we'd go. And he, hey, he was watching me, but I wasn't always watching him like I was supposed to. If I was watching him like he'd never have to ask what the undercover the elephant was. He wanted to see, y'all don't remember, that's a cartoon from 25, 30 years ago. Okay, get over yourself. Ain't got nothing to do with my size. He did call me Baby Huey, but that's another story. We're not going to get into that. We're not going to get into that. But, folks, we've got to be keep our eyes on him. God is, God's path is never in the path of wickedness. Never. He's never where sin is. Number two, God's path is never in the path of worldliness. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Our churches are going down the tubes today because the world has taken over the church. I know you're tired of hearing it, but it's the truth. Church is not about entertainment. It's about evangelism. And if it's all entertainment, people are never going to get saved. But if it's about evangelism, people are going to get saved. Say amen. God's path is never in the path of the wrong. He's always in the path of the right. And God's pathway is always the pathway of light and never of darkness. And we are in him and his path is our path. Study this about being in Christ. You know the Old Testament saints weren't in Christ. He hadn't died yet. We're privileged. The church is privileged that we're hid in Christ. We're in him. What a blessing. Uh, he's holding on to us. We're not holding on to him, honey. I got news for you. And thank God, his path, if we're in Christ, is our path. We've got to make sure we don't let anything distract us and we need to be right in the center of his will because if you're in his will, you will always have the best. Say amen.
Philippians 1.27. Only let your conversation, that means manner of living, your testimony, be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come see you or be absent, or I hear, my, hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast, listen to this, in one spirit. If all of us are in Christ, and all of us are in God's will, we ain't going to never have a squabble. Say amen or amen. I don't care which one. We're always going to be on the same page. Because if we're in Christ and we're all following him, hey, he's in control and he's leading the way. There's no doubt, no question. And in one mind, look at this, striving together. Look, it's not easy for people to get along. Any of y'all in here married? I ain't got to say another word, do I? <laughs> we, look, the, the first year is a honeymoon. The honeymoon comes to an end. The first argument, it's over, honey. I'll hate you. It's done for. And, and, and you got to start striving to do what? Get along. Get along. Got to work at it. It's hard labor to get along. For the faith of the gospel, we work together because Jesus is worth it. Say amen. It's worth it. My daddy told me, Years ago, he said, "Son, sometimes it ain't just it ain't worth it to be right." Oh, don't look innocent out there, y'all! Y'all scared to move, y'all just scared to death. Hey, he said, "Sometimes it just ain't worth it to be right. Sometimes you just need to shut up and go along. <laughs> shut up and go along. It ain't worth the fight." I got two church members fighting right after the pew now. He just hit her and she just hit him. Lord, help us. We're going to have WrestleMania for Saturday gets here. Say amen. Anyway, Romans chapter 8, verse uh, 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with who? Christ. Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be also glorified how? Yeah. There's nothing greater than when God's plan comes together. There's nothing more precious when miracles start happening and God starts blessing. And you can't explain how God's doing it. It's just getting done. Say amen. That's when people are together in Christ. And Christ is the most important thing. And Christ is the most important thing we do. And our goal and our, 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 his will is, it will lead us to his way. So he's watching. We have his word. We have his will. Now look at D. We have his way. Psalms 23 verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now let me stop right there. This is easy for us to fathom because look, I know where I'm going when I die. Thank God I'm going to heaven. But I want you to know I ain't in no hurry to get there. And when I see a saint of God die peacefully, I don't understand it. Because I'd be clawing the walls trying to get out of there and keep alive. But you see, I'm not dying. They are. They're the ones getting to die in grace. It's not my day to die. <clears throat> when my time comes, God will give me grace to go. So we've got to understand that not only in death, but sometimes dying to ourself. Now I'm going to meddling. Okay, dying to your own will, dying to your own idiosyncrasies, your pettiness. Don't look at me like you don't have pet peeves. Every one of you got some. Yeah, we all got them. When our pet peeves override the will of God, we're in big trouble. Because you know what God's going to do? <laughs> He's going to ask you to do something you absolutely don't want to do. He wants to see if you're going to succumb to his will. Or if you can love him enough, if you love him enough to let him have his way. At least that's what Wendy says to me all the time. If you love me, you let me have my way. <laughs> and she usually gets it. Hey, and that's the way it is in a relationship with God. If you really love him, okay, Lord, I love you more than I love myself. Are you with me? I love you more than I love myself. And if that's what you want, that's what I'll do. Me and this microphone gonna have a have a fall and that voice is over. And I'm gonna lose. <laughs> but folks, we've got to learn that 
whether it's physical death or dying to ourselves spiritually. We don't have anything to fear because God's not going to let you down. Physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, he's never going to let you down if you trust him, if you stay near him, if you believe him, if you'll follow him, if you'll hold his hand. This ought to be shouting down. Somebody ought to be shouting because he's good to us. He said, I will fear no evil for thou art with me and thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, you got some crazy preachers, Lord help them. They think the rod and staff beat somebody. That nuts. You know why that rod that a shepherd had had a crook in it? Does anybody know why? So if that sheep fell over the edge, they'd come down and pull that sheep back up. Or if they got out of line, they could pull it. They want to hit the sheep upside the head. The staff want to beat the sheep. It was to help lead them and pull them back in the way gently. Boy, I can't tell you how many times God's had to take his staff and say, all right, big boy, get back over here where you belong. Get back over here where you need to be. You done wandered off again. Get back over here. Get with the rest of the sheep. Just get with the program. And if you're honest, you've seen the rod too. You've seen the staff too. God had to make you go against your own direction because he knows what's best for you. Now, we, he's watching. We have his word. We have his will. We have his way. He's got that rod that'll pull us right back where we need to be. We don't have anything to be feared about. He's with us. Now, look at E. We have his work. Now, I know in America today, that's an ugly word. But it ain't an ugly word. Work. Psalms 23, 5. Thou preparest a table before me. Listen to this. In the presence of mine enemies. Now, if your enemy's out there, you ain't cooking supper. You're watching that enemy. Am I right? You're watching what that enemy's doing. But you know what God's doing for me and you while the devil, oh, this is good. If you don't get this, you sleep. The devil's on our back doorstep, and God ain't even worried about him. The devil's in front of us, and, and God ain't. God's sitting there fixing, he's taking care of me and you. He's done prepared a whole feast for me and you, and he's sticking his tongue at it today. See what I'm doing for my child that loved me? See what I'm doing for my servant that loves me? Old devil, I take care of those that love me. I take care of those that care about me. I look out after those that follow me. You didn't want none of me. You think you are me. You're going to find out you ain't me. You can't do for him what I'm doing for him. Boy, that's good. You see, the devil's not doing lost people a bit of good. He's, he's leading them down a primrose path to hell. Let me go a step further. Christians who backslide on God, he's not helping them. He's trying to destroy them. Take the joy of their salvation away. Ruin the life God paid his blood for. He, look, he can't prepare a table. Think about that. The devil can't prepare a table for you. He can't do anything good for you. But God can only do good for you. If I was so fat, I'd get up and run. If I was so fat and scare some of y'all to death, I'd get up and run. Say amen. Thank God he's never going to do me wrong. You know the devil will make you think, God don't love me. That's a stupid thought. But you'll think it. I thought it. You've thought it. We've all thought it. God, look what God's put me through. He don't love me. What he's putting you through may be the best thing for you. He may be loving you more than you realize. But you got to trust him. He said, Thou anointest my head with oil. Now look, some of these egg-headed preachers, bless their heart, their intelligence far beyond ours, I guess. I don't know. But let me tell you what that means in simple terms. That's the flea dip and the tick dip. It's time if you got an animal in your house to go get them dipped. It's time to go get some tick and flea powder put on them. Get that collar around their neck. See, back in those days, they had to take the sheep and had to anoint the head with oil because them bugs would get down in their eyes and they couldn't see and take them little sheep's eyesight. So they'd anoint that head with oil and them old bugs couldn't get to the eyeballs and the sheep could see good. Maybe God needs to put some oil on your head. Get the fleas and ticks out of your eyeballs so you can see good. We're going to get some fleas and ticks out this microphone. But let me tell you something. He said, my cup, what? Runneth over. 
my cup runneth over. You see, if you're with God, you're never going to go without what you need. Your cup's going to run over. There's going to be blessings coming from every side. If it, uh, when God's anointing is on us daily to do the work he's called us to do, and there's no fleas and there's no ticks and there's no uh, parasites uh, eating away at us and we're, we're free from the demons of hell attacking us, what we do for God and his will and work that is the blessed that is blessed by the power of the Holy Spirit will abundantly be blessed and be fruitful. You'll know who's blessing your life. If you can explain how it happened, you did it. But if you can't explain it, God did it and you're shocked and thankful. Say amen. You're impressed and you're thankful. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him, that's God, that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh where? Yeah. As the Holy God. Now wait a minute. Shut up. If you're in Christ and the Holy Spirit's in you, I think you call that double protection. Everything outside is protected. Everything inside is protected. Whew, that's good preaching if I have to say so myself. Thank God that he is, he worketh in us unto him be the glory. Unto the Lord be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. For me and you, the world's never going to end. I heard yesterday a young fella coming home from work, driving home from work, just before he got home. Don't know what happened. His own dump truck, his cousin was in his dump truck coming this way. He was going home this way. Somehow or another he lost control of his car, pulled in front of that dump truck. Killed him instantly. Killed him. 37 years old. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Life comes to an end sometimes. But you know, for me and you, our life never, even if we die, it ain't over. When we die, it's just the beginning. Say amen. amen. Oh, listen to me. Then finally, we have his, he's watching. We have his word. We have his will. We have his way. We have his work. We know what we're supposed to do, and we've got to do it with him, in him, through us. Then finally, we have his wealth. Look at verse 6. Surely, goodness and what? Goodness is beyond measure. Mercy is what we don't deserve. Thank God for both. Say amen. Thank God for both. Shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. That's not the church. That's heaven. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord how long? We're the wealthiest people who ever lived. We got him on this side. We got him on that side. He's never going to leave us nor forsake us. Look, some people got more money in the bank than they'll spend in two lifetimes that aren't as wealthy as me and you are. My uncle told me one day sitting on the front porch out there and dry folk by that railroad track. He was a free bleeder and had had some surgery and just he'd start bleeding at any moment. He looked at me and he said, Walter, he said, if I had my Buick right there full of money, it couldn't do nothing for me right now. Couldn't do nothing for me right now. He said, all I got is a good Lord. That money couldn't help me, couldn't do a thing for me. He said, I can get up and walk in the house and bleed to death before I get to the couch. I need the mercy of God. I need the grace of God. You see, there's more wealth in this life than just money. There's more wealth in this world than just money. And folks, I want to tell you something. The goodness of God is the greatest favor we can be shown in this life. Psalms 27, 13, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on who? Be of what? Good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart, the inside. Wait 
I say on the Lord. Jeremiah 31, 12. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and they shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. That means you're just going to run into it. Hallelujah. <laughs> you're just naturally going to go into the goodness of God. How can you beat that? You can't beat it with a stick. For weed and for wine and for oil and for the young and the flock and the, of the herd, and their soul shall be as a watered garden, and they shall, be, shall not sorrow, listen to this, any more at all. <laughs> Boy, that's good preaching. Say amen. amen. The mercy of the Lord is the greatest kindness we can be shown in this life. All right, here's the one y'all are looking for, Psalms 103, verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you think about that, that, that don't make good sense. From everlasting to everlasting, what does that mean? It means as far back as God's ever been and as far ahead as God's ever going to go. And you know what the Bible says? He always has been, always will be. Explain it, big boy. I can't. I have faith. I just believe what God says. Amen? I just believe what God says. From everlasting, in other words, there's never been a time before and there never will be a time that God won't show me and you mercy. Whew. Let's just all take a deep breath and say glory to God. Never going to be a time. Then it says, Upon them that fear him. That doesn't mean scared him. It means that trust him. Respect him. You listen to who you, who you respect. Now, look. Now, I'm just being honest. You might have to censor this lurch. I don't know. If you do, just censor it. But I'm going to say it in here. You know, if I watch CNN, I don't pay much attention. Matter of fact, I can't think one minute of my life in the last 30 years I've watched CNN because they don't think right. Now, Fox, I used to could trust. I trust them about halfway now. And I don't watch them half as much as I used to. Now, Newsmax, I, I give them pretty good credit. About 90% of the time, they own the money. But you see, I know what I'm looking at. I know what I can trust. And what I can't, I, I respect certain news outlets and certain news outlets I don't trust at all. But there's one news outlet you can always trust. That's HNN, the Heaven News Network. Say amen. You can always trust, trust HNN. He's going to take care of you. You can have respect toward everything he says because he's not going to lie to you. He don't have no retraction section. You know, Harriet Olson, who had the whether or not thing in the newspaper, Harriet Olson on Little House on the Prairie, she had to retract a whole lot of stuff because she was messed up. <laughs> Nobody trusted Harriet Olson, but everybody can trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Say amen. amen. Oh, he says, in his righteousness unto his children's children. You know, I think the hardest thing about life is it goes by so fast. I am told Eston he better not hold his breath. He's gonna be both of them kids are gonna be gone. He's gonna be bald just before he can turn around good. <laughs> and then they're gonna be bringing grandchildren home for him to take care of them. It's gonna happen just as fast as grease lightning. I'm telling you. And I think the hardest thing in life is for one generation to have to leave another generation behind. I heard one fellow say one time. He said, "I'm not afraid of dying. I'm just scared to leave my kids here without me watching them." <laughs> A lot of truth to that, amen? But isn't it something? It says, His righteousness unto children's children. I'll never forget, it was a 40-some-year-old man back home at the temple. He was a great businessman, had a big construction company going. Had a wife and two children. The two children, one was 13 and one was 9. The doctor walked in one day. He'd been having some stomach trouble. And he walked in and he said, Sir, I, I, I don't want to tell you what i got to tell you. I know you're only 47 years old, but you've got, you got end-stage cancer. And there ain't a thing in this world we can do. You just eat up with cancer all out throughout your body. And there's nothing we can do. 
And that man laid in that hospital, the Virginia Baptist Hospital, for weeks, suffering, in pain. I think it was Brother Earl went to see him. And Brother Earl put his hand in his and said, Son, what's, what are you hanging on for? What are you hanging on for? He said, Preacher, I don't want to leave my children. I don't want to leave my children. I'm, a, I'm afraid to leave my wife and children. He says, But it's out of my hand. Brother Earl said, That's right. You got to trust God. You got to put them in God's hand. Because he's perfect and he doesn't make any mistakes. It looks like a mistake to us, but God knows what he's doing. That man looked over his wife and says, is that right? She says, yes, honey, that's right. Two hours later, that man took his last breath. He put that all that in God's hand. He went on to be with the Lord. Because this verse is true. God's righteousness is good from generation to generation to those that believe in him. To such as keep his covenant, obey his voice, and to those that remember his commandments, three words, to do them. We are the richest people in the world having the Lord in our lives. There's no problem he can't handle. There's no problem too big for him to solve. The biggest problem is us trusting him, putting it in his hand, letting him handle it. It's easy preaching, hard living. But faith makes a difference. And if you give him, if you just give him an inch of faith, he'll give you a mile of grace. So tonight, just come to this altar and say, God, I need a little bit of grace. I need some of your grace. I'm going to give you as much faith as I can, hoping you'll give me all the grace that you can. And you know what? He will never let you down. Stand to your feet. Father, we've preached as best as we can tonight. We thank you for watching over us. We thank you for your word that you provided. We thank you for your will that you provided. We thank you for the path and the way that you provided. We thank you for the work that you've given us and the wealth that's from everlasting to everlasting. And Lord, if we respect you, We'll live in the house of the Lord now and later. And we'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God, help us tonight to come just kneel down an old-fashioned altar and say, Lord, I'm going to give you my faith if you'll give me your grace. Oh, God, I'm going to give you all the faith I can give you if you'll just give me your grace. God, speak to hearts. If there are ones that needs to be saved tonight, I pray they'll come ask Christ to save them. Those Christians that need some more grace, they'll come give you some faith and pray in faith and lay their burdens at the cross and go ahead and serve God and leave the problems with you because you know how to handle them. God bless this invitation. Speak to every heart, I pray in Jesus' name and for his sake.